Hey guys, RC here. Good morning, at least good morning to me. I'm recording this on Saturday. You guys will see this next week. So just as I mentioned in the past, I usually do a bulk of my recording over the weekend. Try to get everything uploaded and uh, you know preset for release for you guys. Just trying to stay on task with everything else going on in life with job and family and everything else. Uh, let's take a quick look. Uh, since our season opener, we did pretty well in the, in that. Uh, we had a 1-1 draw with Huddersfield. Uh, then we had uh, and a goal from uh, Adam Ida. Rotherham, another 1-1 draw. Ferend Rawson was sent off with two yellow cards in a short span. Uh, I think the 27th minute and then the 32nd minute. And the Harvey Elliott got a goal for us to equalize. Uh so that was there. And then uh, we just lost 4-2 to two to Cardiff in the Carabao Cup second round. Uh, Craig Mitchell scored and Oscar scored. Uh, Nico Williams set off with a second yellow uh, in the 59th minute. Paul uh, Nwachu, just a guess. He got a hat trick uh, for Cardiff. And we play them again today in the league. In the table, we are currently in 10th position after three matches. So, long way to go if we are going to make a run at promotion this year. Uh, Brentford up top, along with Crystal Palace, unbeaten on 12 points. Just wanted to check. Okay, we finished third last year. Okay, I was trying to just trying to remember where we were. I just had an Invincibles run. Uh, with my solo save, so I, I was maybe getting that confused. But anyway, let's get to the match. We are underdogs. I'm wondering if we go back to this tactic here, or we stick with this tactic. I think we stick with this one for the time being. So we're going to go with Ida up top, Oscar at the number 10, Mitchell, White, Morell, and Elliott across the mid, Baya, McGinley, Rawson, and Mirez on the back line and Lejubic, uh in goal. Uh, we are missing a couple of guys and I haven't recorded this in a few days because we did talk about the last minute transfers. Palmer. Yeah, that's who I'm looking for. I was thinking it was Gray who's the keeper in my solo save. Where is Palmer? What's the deal with him? Palmer, Palmer. He's not on the bench. I want to say I have Lejubic in my solo save, too. Why is Palmer not? That's interesting. Why he would get benched all of a sudden. He started three matches, three uh, no shutouts, allowed three. And Lejubic, he started two cup matches. Yeah, I don't think he's ready to replace our guy. I'm probably going to have to pause the recording. You shouldn't notice anything, but just, you know, I give full disclosure. <laughs> I've got a guy coming out to do some work. Uh, he'll be out here five or six hours at least. All right, lumped into the box. Keeper makes the play on that. Let's get creative. We are balanced, so we're a little... Now, that was a poor decision there. He, he had all day. He could have chested that down. Ah. Cardiff. Oh, my God. Oh, good block. One of my center backs there. Great block. We've got a counter opportunity. Nothing happens. They're playing an unusual tactic. They see a 5-2-1-2. He pings it from range. It goes wide of the mark. Let's ask for some more creativity. They're focused. We're inspired. Come on, boys. 
Oh, let me pause this. This thing shrunk up again, I just noticed. And you're probably yelling at me, fix the screen, RC! We're dominating possession. We've got four of eight on target. No, no chances created. We need to do better. But they have played well. They have played well. If I raise this to positive... Push forward. No, they didn't like that. Everybody's playing well and everybody's pretty fit. I think we're going to ride these guys. I'm not going to make my 60th minute sub and I think that's going to force my hand. Uh, I do shit. I don't have another center back. I do not have another center back. Morell, is he really only five foot three? Somebody, please, if you know who Joe Morell is in real life, tell me he is not five foot three. That's, oh, that's hilarious. That's shorter than my wife and my daughter. <laughs> of course, this coming from a guy that's, you know, six foot three. All right, we're going to make a sub here. Damn, both of our center backs. Mitchell's actually not playing badly, and I don't have a sub for him. Let's bring Hart on. Let's bring uh, let's bring Starantino on. Ida's not having the best day. Leighton Stewart. You know what? Actually, undo that one. I want to bring Leighton Stewart on for Ida. We already had Hart on, and I'm going to make a triple sub just to do it. Starantino. He can cross well, and he is right-footed. Let's bring him. Uh, he can't play. Let's bring Collins on for Oscar. All right, can we steal one here? Looks like Leighton Stewart plays a super sub. He got credit for it. All right, tactically. Uh, let's go to slow the pace down. Confirm those changes. I think we got really lucky here. We might have just f him. Well, we didn't f him. I'm okay. Long throw. They let it bounce. Looks like Stewart got a push off on the keeper, blocked him out, and then just dropped off for the open shot. That's that's huge. Uh, White White will take a ping. Oh, it's in. Back out. Get across, boys. Come on. There it is. Back door and Craig Mitchell, second of the season. Oh, we have pulled this out in the final 10 minutes to steal points. Some good ball movement there. Got to be happy with what we've created here in the last few minutes. I'm going to take all the credit just because of the uh you know tactical substitutions there that we held off on oh good ball to get it out of danger i have uh, been playing with another tactic on my solo save it's uh it's a very attacking oh my god did he just <laughs> leighton stewart just got his second goal of the game third of the season the brilliant drop pass from Collins moving into that number 10 slot. I do want to watch that again because you don't see that a lot. This is something you don't see a lot in FM20 in my opinion. Most of FM20 is about crosses into the box, right? You don't really see a lot of playmaking where they're sliding it in the channel into space. Look at that. You do not see that a lot in FM20. So that is, I call that a rarity. Very, very nice work, boys. Oh, we did excellent, excellent there down the stretch. I was really worried it was going to be a draw or they were going to steal one from us. But we pull it out. That vaults us up into playoff contention. So that's good. That is good. All right, well, let me get up to the Preston match, and we will 
Take on Preston North End in just a second. All right, we are back for Preston. So Oscar's out uh, for a short time, uh, about three weeks uh, injured in training. I've changed my uh, coach that I use for my selection advice, just my, his suggestion. I've changed that back over from my youth development to my assistant manager, uh, just because he's putting the keeper I want. <laughs> he's not quite as good. He's got a 13. The other guy has a 14 in judging pl uh, player ability. But still, it's... it's um, yeah, I'm not real happy with that. Uh, let's take out the guys that are not available just to make it easier to look at. And we can take out the Zubik and put in, let's see, Wharton's out. I mean, the fact that we don't have Freer on the pitch, but you know what we need here that we were missing the last couple of matches? I need a center back. So let's put Akinola on the bench. Because I do like a little depth. Especially when we get into some yellow card trouble. We're going to ask for the early creativity if we don't mind. I am going to go up to positive again. I think he was off sides. No, Aaron Collins gets his first of the season playing up top. That was some good work by him, I guess because Mitchell was all the way down on the touchline. And yeah, this defender here was keeping Collins on sides. His man lost sight of that. Very good. Half chance created, one on target. Great work. Building out of the back. Beat a little bit of the press that they had on us. Oh, he goes over the top. It's into Ida, and Ida goes near post, his fourth of the season. Nico Williams with the assist, and that was Elliott coming on the wing. So you realize Freer, who's been mostly our starting left winger for two seasons, not even making the bench for us now. That is crazy days. It's one of the things, I guess, that, you know, doesn't, you know, with, with football, European football against any American sport, you don't see that, you don't see that happen a lot. You know, when guys are the stars and the starters, they tend to continue to be able to play for a long period of time. And I was... I was reflecting on that yesterday. I was watching. Uh, I went. I was going back to watch the uh, Leeds United documentary, the first one, the six-parter, where we, uh, you know, where it was not a good finish. And you know, I was struck by the passion and the emotion. And you know, whoa, that was a ping from long range. That had to have been 30, 35 yards out. Pretty. Uh, Optimistic on his part. Oh, do not give up a goal here at the half. And, of course, they do. Hmm. Brad Potts draws them level, uh, back within a goal. Not happy about that. But I, I was, I was kind of thinking about it. And I think what it is is the promotion and the relegation, right? Because it's the fact you know, let's say, and I'm going to use soccer just for the term, just, you know, so I'm not having to clarify. But in football here in the States, if you finish in last place, right, with the worst record in the league, you don't have to worry about having to sell all your players. You don't have to worry about losing revenue for next year because you're in a lower league you still have everything that you had and you almost in a way get rewarded by having the top pick to potentially get the best player, the best youth player 
coming up the following season, right? Oh, anybody's struggling. Harvey White's struggling. Let's give him a rest. Uh, let's bring on uh, Kiko and Harvey Elliott. We could bring Nico Williams up, and then we could bring Brian. Uh, let's bring Shepard on. Shepard wants a little more playing time, but he is down the list. I have tried to sell him. So you end up getting the, as I was saying, you, you end up getting the best youth player. Uh, let's uh, demand more. To potentially add more depth and talent to to your roster, uh, to your squad. Whereas in soccer, if you finish in the bottom, you get relegated, which could potentially cost you millions of dollars at the top. And certainly a good chunk of, you know, you're probably going to have less fans turn out because, you know, your plastics aren't going to show up. Uh, nice through. Was he on sides? He rounds the keeper, puts it in. I don't know. He's standing there, but I think he walked up. All right, so no, we're good. There, there's a goal. Is that fifth on the season for Ida? Nice. Oh, yeah, he was on sides when that ball was played through. Nice dribble to the right just to get the keeper off his line. Very happy with that, boys. Um... So I, I guess that's why there's so much more stress, nerves, what have you, in soccer than there is in, in football. Oh, uh, was he on sides again? And he rounds the keeper and open netter. Oh, my goodness. He rounded the keeper, got the keeper off his feet. And that is a quick brace for Adam Ida. Oh, he just planted that ball over the top. And yes, Ida was on our half of the field when he made that uh, first touch. Oh, that was a brilliant goal right there. Wow. Got to like that one. All right, let's uh, make one last sub here. Ida's already on. Oh, he's on the hat trick today. He already has his hat trick. I guess we could pull him off. You know what? He does have the hat trick. Let's go ahead and let him get the uh, standing ovation from the crowd here at home. We'll bring uh, young Leighton Stewart on. So, you know, anyway, that was what I was, you know, because I was, I was looking at how passionate, you know, the fans are in the stands. Some well above what they, you know, is, is, Realistic. Oh my God. How did Collins put that one in the net? I don't know how Collins scored that one. I mean, I saw it, but that didn't make sense. All right, let's see. Collins is here. So he. Good tackle. Oh my God. I don't know how he did that. I mean, literally, the ball got passed to him just. A few feet. Oh, that looks impossible. I, I that physically, I don't think that's possible. <laughs> I'm not going to complain. Not going to complain. All right, we'll have the keeper slow the pace up a little bit. <clears throat> Baya, deep throw into the box, and Nico Williams. Gets his first goal of the season. On the header, we are just ripped, pressed, and apart down the stretch here. Six to one. Wow. 12 shots, nine on target, six goals. Six chances created. That is insane. Excellent work for the boys. So in the uh, either in the comments or on my Twitter feed, whichever one you guys prefer, start giving me some ideas that you would like to see uh, for FM21. Uh, probably for the beta save is what I'll do. Uh, take one of your suggestions. Uh, you know, it'll be short during the, the beta release, and that's going to be here 
within a couple of, you know, I mean, it's it's coming, right? So November 24th, so we should have the pre-release around November 10th. And we're end of September right now, September 26th. So we've only got about five weeks left of FM21. So I need to push through uh, to get as many episodes of this up. So it may mean skipping more, but let me know what you guys would like to see for an FM21 beta. I have an idea of doing something dealing with Marcelo Bielsa. Um, not his teams in order, but just kind of the philosophy, um, how he picks teams, leaving teams, right? Uh, as a save, maybe I'm just trying, I'm thinking about it, but, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. And, uh, like I said, I will look at maybe some, one of your ideas, uh, for the, uh, FM 21 beta uh series that we'll do that we do every year and uh, then we will hit the ground running and again i don't know i mean we're doing a solo single team save here um we you know we've done a journeyman the last two seasons so i you know and i usually do two saves during the year but we may you know we may try to do one just one long save for fm21 who knows I was thinking about maybe bringing back the uh, the uh, Victor Orta challenge that I did. Uh, what was that? FM 19, I think we did that. So we may do that again, a director of football challenge uh, type thing. But anyway, let's take a look. The win today pushes us up to fifth, gives us a plus nine goal differential. We're within striking distance, at least, of uh, automatic promotion. We are in the playoff hunt. And at least we're starting to put some points between us and <coughs> Nottingham Forest. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, that's an inside joke. Um, they're funny. They're funny. Uh, but anyway, where do we come back? I'm going to have to sit down. I don't know where I'm going to come back here. So I need to sit down, figure out how many days are between now when this episode will go up and the release of the beta of the the pre-release of fm21 how many days that is how many upload days how many episodes and then again we may stretch out seasons to try to blow through these so i would like to maybe come back oh we could do an aussie villain challenge and do watford and brentford right that could be the aussie villain challenge that might be an interesting one. If you haven't watched him, he's, he's an Australian uh, FM YouTuber. Uh, he's got a – he's pretty good. I, I like him. Um, he has a lot of Australian humor that he interjects, and I have to go Google it because I don't get it. You know, it's just like whew, over my head or under my feet or wherever it goes. But, uh, but anyway, that would be the Aussie Villain Challenge. Uh, of course uh, – West Brom and Swansea. I've mentioned before, Swansea is probably my favorite badge, even though I'm a Leeds fan. I, I like the Swansea badge. Uh, I don't like the club because of how they handled the Dan James affair a few years ago. And, of course, we'd like to see Leeds as well. But we need to get into the season. So let me look at that. Uh, if, if I'm going to have more episodes, then we may do Watford-Brentford. If I don't come back for that, it may actually be closer to November. And I understand that's a big jump, but I hope you guys kind of see the urgency now with the, the end of the tunnel in sight. We've got to start cranking out episodes if we want to get through more seasons and see if we can get to the Premier League. Um, maybe this season we can kind of take at our normal pace and then speed it up starting next season. Don't know. But anyway... That's a future problem to worry about, as uh, Lelujo says, for future Kev, that's a future RC problem. All right, guys, we will see you later. Uh, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to hit that little ding-dong bell so you get the notifications for the daily updates Monday through Saturday. And we'll see you next time. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.